Okay, the last chunk of material you have to work on is something you're already kind of familiar with, how to solve a radical equation. And so two of the problems on the sheet, number 22, which involved a square root, the square root of 2k plus 1 equals 19, and problem number 25, these are problems you've, we've already kind of talked about how to do them. In fact, number 25, I think you almost had that exact problem on the last, on the test on quadratics, okay? And so you remember kind of what to do? The index of the radical is a two. To undo it, we got to square. If we square one side, we got to square the other side. But make a mental note, you better check your answers because that can introduce extraneous solutions. So you have square root being squared, it undoes each other, and you're left with 2k plus 1. Over here, the 19 times itself, that would wind up being 361. So then we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, which gives us a 2k equaling a 360. And now we just divide by 2, and we get k equaling 180. Okay. Now, we do need to check these to make sure, because that may or may not work in the, in the original. Radical equations have an issue with something called domain, and that's something you learn about later. So you go back in, and you put in the 180, where the x was, and you see if it winds up giving you what you need. So if I put a 180 there, I get a 361. And 361, the principal square root of that is 19. It does check. I know for sure I'm right. All right, now 25 is a lot more complicated because you've got some other stuff on that side besides the radical. You have this minus x. So your first step is going to be to add the x. So it's over on the other side. And so you wind up having square root of 2x plus 15 equals x plus 6. Okay, you're then going to square both sides. All right, when you do that, you wind up having the square undo the square root. So you're going to have just the 2x plus 15 here. But over here, be careful, be careful, be careful, because x plus 6 squared isn't just x squared plus 36. You've got to think of it as being x plus 6 twice. So when you FOIL that out, you're going to get x squared plus 6x plus another 6x plus 36. So we have 2x plus 15 on the left, and we have x squared plus 12x plus 36 on the right. And this is quadratic, okay? So that means I want to get a 0 on one side, and I like my square term to be positive. So I'm going to move the 2x over and the 15 over, and when I do, I get the x squared plus 10x plus 21 equal to just 0. I like my 0 on the right, though, so I'm going to put it over here. All right, and then you ought to try factoring. Most of these are going to factor. And so when we factor, we get an x and an x, a 3 and a 7, both positive. And so we have x plus 3 equals 0, x plus 7 equals 0. And so we think our answers are going to be x equals negative 3 or x equals negative 7. All right, now the part you have to remember to do is the checking part on these because you might have introduced, when you square both sides, that could potentially introduce solutions that work like here, but they don't work in the original problem. Okay, so what you got to do is go back to the original problem and do your check for each of these. So I'm going to plug in the negative 3 in those spots where the x is. And so I'm going to see if negative 3 works. And I'm going to get a negative 6 plus 15, which is a 9. Here I get 3 on the right and the, oops, and the square root of 9. up a little bit. Okay. 
and the square root of 9 turns out to equal 3, and so I know that one checks. So the, when we got the x being negative 3 right here, okay, that one checked. All right, now the other solution we had, the negative 7, is what we're working on now. Now these can sometimes both work, sometimes both not work, and sometimes one works but the other one doesn't. Okay, so now I'm plugging in the negative 7 everywhere. So that's going to give me a negative 14 plus 15, which is a 1 underneath. This gives me a negative 1 over here, but this is positive. This is just square root of 1. It doesn't have a, a minus in front of it. That's 1, and that does not equal negative 1 like it's supposed to. And so that means negative 7 did not work, and so that your only answer to this question is going to be the negative 3. Okay, so that type of question you actually had on the test for chapter 11, okay? So what I want to do is now let's take a look at a question similar to number 22. Look at 23, okay? Look at the difference between 22 and 23. On 23, the only difference is I'm giving you a cube root of something equals a number. Okay, now on radical problems, you do want to get your radical isolated. So like 25, the radical was not by itself, so we had to add x to both sides. But here the cube root is by itself. Okay, so we're ready to go ahead and try to undo the radical. But you know, on the previous problem, the index here was a 2. On this problem, the index is a 3. So the difference is we're going to wind up cubing both sides. So if we cube the cube root, we're going to get 2x plus 5. And when we cube negative 5, we're going to get a negative 125. Okay. See how that just got rid of the radical? We just have a nice linear equation. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. That gives us 2x equals negative 1, 30. And when we divide by 2, we get x equals, and when we divide that in there, we get x equals a negative 65. Okay? Okay, and so that winds up being the solution to this one, It'd be just negative 65. Okay, all right, and then we've got one more problem, and on this problem we're doing the cube root of 7x, and on the other side we've got the cube root of 4x minus 9. So you see how the index is a 3 on each of these? So what that means is we're going to wind up needing to cube both sides. Okay. I'm, we should, in that cabinet above the desk on the right-hand side, some kind of acetaminophen. All right. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is cube both sides here. And the cubing will undo the cube root and leave you with a 7x. The cubing will undo the cube root and leave you with a 4x minus 9. And so we have a linear equation now that we can proceed with, we can go on and solve. The, the part I wanted you to see is if it's a cube root, you cube to undo it. Now these have to be the same on both sides for this to work easily, right? You know, we were lucky they were the same because then just doing, because you always have to do the same thing to both sides. All right, then at this point, we're going to take away a 4x. Okay, and that's going to give us 3x equals negative 9. So now we're going to divide by 3, and that gives us x equals negative 3. Okay. All right, now the cube roots, the roots that are odd really don't have to be checked. It turns out that cube roots and fifth roots, there's no domain issue there. So you can save yourself some time and not check those if you don't want to. So this should be the right answer if, if we did everything correctly. Okay. Now, if, if we had had on that one, let's say on that one, um, 
let's say it was a, a seventh root. So let, let's say instead of a three, there was a seven there on each of these. Okay, so this is our what if. The only difference would be what we would do is come in and raise both sides to the seventh power. Okay, so we'd have a 7x on this side and a 4x minus 9 again on that side because raising to the seventh power undid the seventh root and we'd really wind up with the same thing. We'd have 3x being negative 9 and x would again be negative 3. I wanted you to just to see that idea. So the extension I'm doing on equations is how to handle when something's not a square root because you already knew how to do square roots. We did that on the previous test. Okay, so that's it then for the radical expressions and equations. So just have at it, do the homework, and um, then take the test when you're ready.